Hey, welcome back to the Silverback Show. This is part two of feminism and the freedom to choose to be yourself. So one of the things that we've got to look at everybody in terms of how we're going to raise our daughters and how we're going to raise our sons is clearing out this feminist ideology that destroys males from feeling like they can be themselves if that means that they're going to be aggressive if that means they're going to be assertive because we want them to become silverbacks and silverbacks don't become good silverbacks unless they follow their innate ability to be high achievers we want this also because it's uh the way that these uh um silverbacks can provide and protect for the female who's going to have the child and and take most of the responsibility for the child bearing years so if we're constantly looking at how we can do a better job of that we need to first start with how we're conditioning and educating our boys and girls and if we follow the research out there we're gonna know that we just got to get out of the way and let boys be who they're born to be and let girls be who they're born to be and that means freedom to choose if i'm deeply concerned about a girl my daughter my sister my wife my mother, if I'm deeply concerned about the daughters and the sisters and the mothers and the wives in my community, I'm going to want them to have a freedom away from the pressure that what we might define as Nazi feminism has done or what we might define as the shadow side or the dark side of of feminism if we look at the history of feminism feminism started with tier one feminism which was giving women the right to vote giving women the right to work and giving women the right to access to property that's tier one feminism and then if we move into tier two feminism, we wanted to create equal opportunity for women in university and in the workforce. And we're long, long, long past tier one and tier two. So between tier two and tier three, a big misunderstanding has taken place, which equated equality with the most highly aggressive driven females and we know that there's only a small percentage of females that are as driven as males to the highest levels of achievement and yet we're preaching that to 100 percent of our girls and we're encouraging them on the soccer fields and we're encouraging them you know in their education and we now have a, a crisis where um, we got more females graduating from universities than males, and we've got more females feeling this psychotic break from their nurturing beings. Yes, a psychotic break, a neurotic break, a split from the heart center of their womanliness that makes them nurturing and makes them mothers so we have to relax a bit we have to meditate on that we have to allow them to meditate on that we have to be able to think through hey why are we putting so much emphasis on you being this super testosterone male-like high achiever when at 19, 20, 24, 25, 28, 30, 35, or 40, when you're having, you know, your urge to get pregnant and have a baby, 
and that doesn't fit. So let's go to infancy and allow these girls to explore freely these nurturing qualities and these mothering qualities. And if we're truly, truly honest about this, we'll see that these Nazi feminists have been leading the conversation for the centrist females who want to just have a balanced life and be able to make enough money to provide for their families. Or maybe they want to be able to have, be a mother and be able to balance that with also having something of their own. But they're not interested in being at these higher tier levels as are not a lot of males, but even so, much less females, as already defined. And if, we, and, if, and if this really is the truth, then, and we take it into here, and then we allow this understanding to take place in nature outside as these children are growing, um, I'm going to tie that in, guys, with with the way that I raised my family and the, one of the reasons why um, I home educated my children. Huge home education movement started with religious Christians who didn't like the fact that um, they weren't allowed to have their children talk about God in school or have their teachers talk about God in school, even though God is one of the most important things to a great many of American families. And even though the secularist ideas are just other ideas and as are Christian ideas. And so why not talk about it? I mean, when I was in university, I took courses on Christianity and Judaism in literature courses. We didn't take it from a religious standpoint and nobody was trying to indoctrinate us into any kind of religion, but we at least had the freedom to to choose that. So home education started with a lot of Christian families doing something and, and I have to tip my hat to them because even though um, that's not my path, that did give and lead to um, opportunity for me to be a home educating parent. And one of the main reasons that I became a home educated parent was because I simply didn't want this brainwashing feminist uh, um, education system to try to tell my boys they couldn't be aggressive, assertive males. And I certainly didn't want them to brainwash my daughter into uh, becoming the flowering uh, um, child who, who had to learn a lot to be tough amongst a bunch of guys, but also had um, a nature that was different than the guys and was allowed to flourish in that nature. So, so we have to take this into the child rearing years because this is where it's beginning and this is where it's crucial. We have to bring a heart-centered, intelligent consciousness into parenting that allows our daughters to reflect upon their role as nurturing females who will love to nurture their males and who will love to nurture their families and who will love to and and who will love to look back on their lives in their old age and have pride that their family life is what mattered most to them which is something that the data shows us is important to women. That doesn't mean they can't have a career. That doesn't mean they can't work. That doesn't mean that they can't, actually, let's cut that out. That's part of the nonsense. We're talking about freedom of choice instead of brainwashing. So if women and men 
through feminist ideology, thought that it was brainwashing to tell women that they were property of men and that they didn't have the right to vote equal to men was brainwashing. Then giving them the right to vote, giving them the right to access to property, giving them the freedom and right to education, and giving them uh, equal opportunity access to careers and jobs has to be balanced with not brainwashing our daughters into thinking that they shouldn't spend time reflecting on their ability to give birth and their deepest nature which allows them a, a which gives them more of an innate focus on the other and taking care of the other It's very, very interesting that there's a lot of acceptance of men who tend to go into nursing because they have a more feminine personality and they tend to enjoy this nurturing role. And it's very, very interesting that gay men who go into the nursing professions are warmly accepted, but we have a hard time accepting in our women who are more feminine than our heterosexual men most of the time, that we don't accept that with the preponderance of women who have this nurturing nature. Okay, so that's, that's part two. Part two is how do we create the environment in our home life because we know we're not going to get it in our education system prior to going at five, six, seven years old into an education system that's going to destroy that? How do we create and offset this imbalance? That's where the silverback comes in and that's where the question of how is it done in nature comes in. We know, we know that the mammalian brain and the reptilian brain and the old brain and our hardwired aspects of who we are as men and women and males and females and human beings as homo sapiens has shaped us over tens and hundreds of thousands of years. And now we have this, for how many tens of thousands of years, this prefrontal lobe that allows culture to do something different than biological hereditary DNA nature. And if you look at the Homo sapien brain, one of the th in, 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 in the tripartite brain, in three parts, if you look at the three parts of the Homo sapien brain, and then you bring that into our boys and our girls, you understand that throughout their development, as this brain is developing and evolving into a human being, there's a battle going on there for territory. The old brain is interested in survive, survival. How do I eat? How do I get water? How do I have sex? with how do I create music? How do I compete in sports? How do I think about philosophy? All of that 
is part of who we are and we're trying to deny some of the most hardwired aspects of ourselves with believing that through culture and through our ideologies we can recreate homo sapiens think about that for a little while just meditate on it give me your stories give me your feedback give me your comments this is an ongoing conversation namaste Gorilla fierceness.